now we are we all are going to see about the adv advanced risk management okay so first of all in advanced risk management there are two things which are very important for advanced risk management one is assessment methodology which we will see in today's session and the another is scoping scoping we will discuss in the later one okay so let's start um, to see about assessment methodology okay so here in the navigation filter this search here assessment methodology risk assessment methodology yeah correct so open this one and the scope for this uh, must be advanced risk management so grc advanced risk okay here first of all i will show you the previously created one okay just open any one of them okay so uh, here what we are uh, seeing like uh, name you can mention anything then uh, domain area and state must be published then only it will be usable okay first of all let discuss why we are going to use assessment methodology so it is used to calculate risk or object okay like it can be used to calculate two things one is a risk or uh, we can use to calculate object okay uh, ca uh, like uh, when we are talking about risk so we have already seen what is risk here objective object means like uh, it may confuse you but uh, don't worry like object means here uh, we can select any table for which we want to calculate the policy exception policy exception we have already seen so no worry about that okay okay so i think we need to open the new form click over new button yeah. so name can be anything so mention test assessment methodology okay domain area is irm it is auto populated okay it is in currently draft state we need to publish it okay here in the access we have two option one is risk and another is object risk and object okay if we are selecting risk means we are going to calculate about all the things related to risk which we have already seen in the normal risk management but if we select object then it will ask us to mention the table for, for which you want to calculate the policy exception 
okay if we will select a particular table then uh, based on our methodology the policy exception will be uh, going to calculate it okay now we are going to calculate for the risk okay I think there is some issue with my instance. Okay. So let's select risk. Now applicable entity class. You can select your class like uh, we have uh, created an uh, entity type. So entity type was uh, belongs to application. So based on that, you can select your entity class. Okay. Once you selected the application class, now in the workflow, so here are four options, right? Like inherent risk, control effectiveness, residual risk, enable risk response, okay? So if you are selecting all of these, so the like um, based on selected uh, things the workflow will get attached okay if we are selecting all that then it will um, attach all the workflow with this methodology okay so let's just select all okay now in the uh, okay so in business validation means it will validate whether mandate uh, like uh, always breach of appetite on breach of tolerance okay so if you select always means the final comment will be mandatory okay in every situation no matter whether it is breach of appetite or breach of tolerance or no breach of appetite or no breach of tolerance okay you can also customize these things like on breach appetite you can mandate the field okay so it will not always but when breach of appetite will happen then the comment uh, final comment will be mandatory same for breach of tolerance okay then uh, here one tick uh, like uh, checkbox is there so what does it means like uh, residual score lower than inherent okay so th uh, this one validate whether residual score is lower than inherent or not okay it must be true okay so it will check here mandate risk response okay so mandate risk response is always or on breach of appetite or on breach of tolerance okay like risk response should be mandatory okay automatically create issue so when you want to create issue on breach of appetite or on breach on breach breach of tolerance okay so it can you define from here okay now in the roll up configuration here like um, how you want to calculate ale or um, like score okay so uh, i am showing you the like calculate ale based on if, uh, whether you want to sum of all the ALE or you want average of all ALE or if you want maximum of maximum one of them okay or minimum one of them okay which one is minimum or which one is maximum so that will be given into that ALE okay now here uh, so I'm giving here the average okay now calculate score based on like what average maximum or minimum you want so you can mention over here how you want to calculate okay so these two things we have uh, seen now here reference information okay so uh, these are regarding like uh, whether you want these uh, things in your related list or not like show related risk event so all the risk event will be um, will be appear in the related list of this form okay so related risk indicator so open issue show previous assessment so all this thing if you have if you will check 
then all these things will be seen in the risk form in the related list okay so you have seen this one other configuration here like allow override of result like if anything is calculated so whether you want whether you can change it or not okay so like uh, if you not uh, check this one that means that will be in um, read only mode and you cannot change override okay but if you check this box that means you can override that okay copy previous response so if that risk has already happened previously and resolve so whatever the risk um, like uh, whatever the response uh, in that risk like previously risk uh, have some responses okay so that responses will get copied in the uh, new one okay which is similar okay copy previous responses then advance reminder okay so like uh, uh, like it will uh, give a reminder okay uh, that how many days of completion okay means uh, before completion of that risk it will give the reminder okay like five days or three days two days you can mention over uh, like overdue reminder okay if the date was uh, passed away of uh, fixing that risk so after how many days you want to give overdue reminder so it is same like, okay now uh, risk identification so risk identification how you want to be okay if you want uh, from library or ad hoc here library means um, some library has there which have predefined risk identification rule and something okay so uh, if that matches then it will tell us like it will auto populate the thing like it is based on this okay and if you want manually okay if you identified manually this risk okay so in that scenario you can mention ad hoc but if you want from both okay uh, library or ad hoc so you can select over here okay so these things you have understand now just save this form Once you save this form, so uh, based on uh, the selected workflow, all the assessment type will be created. See, we have selected inherent risk. So here inherent assessment uh, created. We have set control uh, effective. So the control assessment is there. We have selected residual risk. So the residual assessment has been created now we have to fix these things okay one by one so open each assessment and as we have previously seen how assessment work so similarly we have to publish it here so here qualitative score logic you can define like whether you want some minimum maximum average product okay so based on that it will calculate it okay now it is in okay here you can um, create factors okay factor uh, like uh, based on that factor it like it will average them or see like factor we can define over here or we can okay about factor there is um like there are lots of factor group factor manual factor right uh, we will see it okay uh, uh okay 
just let search in the navigation filter about factor. Okay, in the advanced risk assessment, what you are seeing here, group factor, manual factor, automated factor, automated scripted factor, okay? So, manual factor is the basic one, okay? One manual factor created, you can attach to any inherent assessment. But if you are, you want to group uh, two or more than two manual factor, so you can create group factor and you can, um, you can uh, like group all the manual factor in a single group okay automated factor is it will uh, like same it can be automated and a scripted one through this script we can do okay now what we are going to see let's just uh, if factor like when uh one main point for this, which we need to keep in our mind is that if factor is published, okay, and no other methodology has been attached to it, then on, then that uh, factor will be available to add in the related list only, okay? So let's just see whether any published, and empty assessment methodology is available or not okay so no inherent or like no factor is available there okay so let's create one manual factor Okay, so name we can mention. Factor, okay. Factor contribution. Qualitative you want or quantitative or you want both, okay. So we can select both. Then display order is one or what you can mention. User response like choice number, text or currency or percentage. So you can mention over here. Then waiting you can mention over here. Then description you can mention. Okay. You can mention here some text like how it will work or how like guidance text. Okay. As of now mention text here. Let's just save this form. So this one is one manual factor we have created. Okay, we can create more uh, like similar uh, factor with different attributes and then we can attach in a single group factor. Okay, so uh, we need to first publish it, then it will be available. So just publish it. Add entries to the qualitative transformation criteria in the related list to publish the factor. Okay, so here we have to qualitative transformation criteria like display text uh, we can mention we can continue this on later session thank you guys bye